But I will be minor about Friday afternoon, the Indian of Mincha. That uh, if I'll hear that, uh, I'll have my way of finding out who was here. Uh, anybody who wasn't here for the minion, uh, the minion party will, will face the possibility of being uh, in on the out shoppers. Okay? So I'm, I really mean business with it. I don't want any more for this uh, half kilo shoppers business just to go on. All right? Everybody got it clear? Okay. All right, so now we're starting off. Uh, we're turning to uh, Pasha Kedoshim, which is the second Pasha we read uh, on the Shabbos. And we're turning uh, to chapter Yudtes. And Pasik uh, Yud Zayim. We see that the Pasik says, Loisisno es hachicha. Well, actually, the Pasik before also uh, tells us that you mustn't be a gossiper. You mustn't walk around gathering gossip and then giving it further to other people. And that also uh, includes the whole uh, issue of Russian horror of uh, speaking evil uh, language about other people and so on. However, says the Pasik, Loisisno es hachicha bilavavelcha. You mustn't uh, hate your brother in your heart. In other words, that if you feel that something has uh, been done by him to interfere with your, with your honor, with your status in life in general, then you must uh, correct him. In other words, if you feel he's acted uh, wrongly, then you should uh, tell him and uh, call him to order. But even though there are different um, uh, halachas when to get to that, you can't just do it uh, any old how, but as a mitzvah to uh, be mochiach, to call him to order al pi din, al pi Torah, al pi uh, the, the proper conduct of how you should be towards other people. And uh, there's a mitzvah even uh, to do that. Now that's the mitzvah of mochiach to of hate. However, you should not bear upon him a hate. So what does Rashi say? Rashi says, Loisalbin es ponov barabi. Even though you have what to pull him to order, you want to tell him that he's acted wrongly and you want to show him how he's acted wrongly. But that's the mitzvah of Hocheach to correct. However, you must do it in such a way that you mustn't yourself get into a into possibility of a hate. And how would that be? That if you were to tell him all these things in a way that would embarrass him in front of the public. Yeah, in other words, that you would be malbin, you would make his face go white. Uh, meaning, as the Gemara says in the second Erechin, that uh, due to the shock of what happens, then the red blood goes out of his cheeks and it's replaced by uh, paleness and whiteness. Uh, that means that uh, you've really uh, caused him a deep shame in front of people. Uh, that's one of the on him that the Mishnah says in uh, Pirochi Oves that Cholila, uh, somebody who does that to his friend, a boy, you can't have a portion in the world to come. It's a very strict uh, matter according to uh, the mission in Perkiyovic. However, we see that uh, you should uh, correct him, but one of the main requirements of that correction that you give to your friend is that it must be done in a way that he won't suffer shame in front of other people. And the Gemara says over there in Masech uh, Erkin that Rabim is Shloishov. It's enough three people uh, already to be considered uh, rabbi. Uh, so you must be very careful how you correct somebody, even though it may be in a situation where you are required to correct him. However, we see that that's, uh, you mustn't guard the sinner in your lay, in your heart. You must do the best to reveal that you've been upset, and if it's al pitera, to try and show him that he shouldn't bring you uh, to feeling hate for him in the, in the future, but 
you must immediately rid yourself of that uh, hatred or upset uh, with him. And then the Pasik says, Loi Sikoim, Loi Sitoer. You must not take revenge from Russian Nikomo. Uh, you must not take revenge, Loi Sitoer, and you must not hold a grudge. Sitoer uh, is from an Aramic root word meaning to guard. In other words, to guard a hatred in your heart, then you mustn't do that. Espenay Amelcha, the sons of your people. Well, that's an unusual uh, usage of language in the Pasik, the flow in Tera Shibiksav. But I haven't got the time now to go into that. That is an interesting deal. We usually we find that we refer to other Yidden as uh, uh, Amelcha or uh, Israel or Bnei Israel. Bnei Amelcha is an unusual expression. However, and you shall love your neighbor like yourself. Ani uh, Hashem says Eber that uh, he you, he literally uh, signs off Eber that old pasuk with the usage of his name, the Shem Amiyuchad. So uh, we meet up with the famous Pesach uh, uh, at the end of a series of negative commandments. First of all, uh, you mustn't gossip, and then you mustn't hate somebody. And then if you do correct him about that, you must be careful not to do it in an improper way. Then you mustn't take revenge. Then you mustn't hold a grudge. And as a, a finality and a summing up, so comes along Rashi, Rashi brings us, what does it mean, loy uh, sikoi? What does it mean not to take revenge? So I might have pictured myself uh, hiding in some bushes and with uh, swords and guns or something to take revenge <laughs> against uh, somebody. So Rashi says, no, what does it mean not to take revenge? Yeah, so if somebody said to you, <coughs> or you said to somebody, Please lend me your uh, your how do you call it? your uh, spade or your uh, rake or something like that. I need to work in my garden. Uh, my garden. And he said, to "You know, I'm not going to lend you. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't hope by lending you my my spade or my uh, rake or whatever it is." And uh, okay, so you you didn't succeed with him. The yeah, uh, the, the, the next day. He comes to you and he says, maybe you lend me your, your spade or your axe. I need uh, uh, to cut my wood. And you say to him, I'm not going to give you my spade just like you didn't give me, I'm sorry, my axe, just like you didn't give me your rake when I wanted it. So it's like you didn't give me, I'm not going to give you. So Rashi says, that's the union of revenge. That's the union of taking revenge. And then he says, what does it mean, Lois Shitoyer? Uh, you shouldn't guard a, a grudge. That you do give him the... the, the <laughs> you do give him the, uh, the axe when he comes to ask you for your axe, even though he didn't give you when you asked him. And then you say to him, yeah, here's the axe, old man, but you should take a careful look and see, I'm not like you, am I? You didn't give me your, uh, your uh, rape, but I'm being so good as to give you my... My uh, acts, that when you do that, you're being over, you are transgressing the negative commandment of Loisi, because you're showing him that you're doing it, but you're guarding a grudge inside your heart. And you're saying, you see, I'm not like you. And so what does it mean? Uh, you have to give him the axe with a full heart and not remember for a moment that he didn't give you his spade when you are. So that we see is the union of Loisi, Koim, Loisi. So when we think about it, there are very Balabatish examples of what it means, and he called very you know, homely type examples of what it means not to take revenge. Like I would have thought I would have pictured in my mind a much more dramatic uh, uh, pose of somebody taking revenge and uh, not to hold a grudge. I would also thought that maybe it could be a much more heavy and dramatic matter. But over Russia, she says, no, that's the, that's the explanation of those two negative commandments. Now, the truth of the matter is, the Rashi uh, brings that 
uh, he gets it from uh, a famous medrash on uh, Pash- on uh, Sefer Vaikra, which is called the Teres Kahanim, Rashi calls it. And in other places, it's called the Sifro. And it's a, a, a medrash, which is Miuchas. It's said to be uh, written by Rabbi Shmuel. Uh, and uh, it deals with all the uh, dinim in Sefer Vaikra. So that's what's written over there. <coughs> but it's also uh, mentioned in a Gemara a sector, Yuma. Uh, there's also a similar uh, type Rashi. So we see that uh, uh, the lead up to the Mitzvah Sasef from the Aftal Kamoecha is a whole series of negative uh, commands, a whole series of negative things. Then comes along Rashi, we are Aftal Reacha Kamoecha, Omar Rabbi Akiva. This is a great general rule in the in the Torah, and Rashi does attribute that to the Torah, the Torah Kahan. That's put down in the Torah Kahan. So Rabbi Kiva tells us that this is a great general rule in the in the Torah, but he doesn't tell us what does it really mean. We have to learn Rashi. He just says this is a big general rule in the whole of the Torah. So we have to understand what does it mean in order that I should be able to know uh, what is this general rule and how does it affect, why does it affect the whole of the Torah and uh, so on. So we have to say, just in the very fact that Rashi said that this is a cloud god hill, but or that in itself, and he, he mentions that it was said by Rabbi Akiva, that's an extra detail. Of Rashi brings us a cloud god hill, but uh, that would tend to indicate that it may be in those words that it's telling you that it's a great general rule. Now with that, Rashi already tells me, uh, in effect, what is the uh, uh, hidden, uh, as you might call it, content, or what is the inner meaning of these words? We all have to learn by telling you that it's a cloud, Godel, Pachola So there are differing opinions amongst the great uh, authorities as to how is that done. How come that Rashi hints to me that this is a cloud, Godel, that that tells Tells me what is we are after the reach of Kamoicha Ola, all about, and it's well known that there's another shaila with the Ramban asks, and the Ramban says, how can you love another person yeah, like your yourself Kamoicha yeah, in the positive sense? We are after that you should be devoted and 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 and, and how do you call it, uh, completely committed to another person with love, just the way you. Love love yourself. I mean, that's almost an impossibility. That's what the Ramban said. So, we would have to assume that by saying this is a cloud god of the Torah, with that, Rashi is also covering that question. Plus, there are other questions uh, that could also maybe come up in our minds when I get to the, the, uh, With this expression, Rashi is telling us uh, the purish of of what it means to love your fellow man, and at the same time, he's telling me that it's no gear to the whole thing, eh? and who said it, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva. So now we'll come back to the fact that it was said by Rabbi Akiva, we'll come back to that a little bit later, because that's, in, if we look it up in the Torah's Kohanim, or if we look it up in the Talmud uh, Yerushalmi, what the same uh, in and occurs in the Talmud Yerushalmi, uh, then we'll be able to sort of get an idea why Rashi called it Rabbi Akiva, what was all in it. First of all, why would we say it's from Be'ahatul Reach or Komoicha that he would that, by telling him, I'm sorry, by telling me that it's a cloud god deal, Rashi's told me all I need to know about. It. And in addition, he's indicated to me how important it is to the whole term. So some people want to begin, and quite rightfully, they want to begin with a Gemara Masekta, a Gemara Masekta Shabbat. So even though uh, Rashi writes his, uh, all of his Pirushim from Ben Chomishle, Ben Chomishle Mikra, 
And a Ben Chomish Lamikra, he may not know about this Gemara and Shabbos. <laughs> so that's the weakness of this particular argument. But a lot of people do say that this is what Rashi is trying to include. And maybe we could even justify that uh, in some ways, even though it's going to be a little problematic that the Malamid will have to tell them about this Gemara. We wouldn't be able to expect them to know if they're Ben Chomish Lamikra to know this Gemara. So what is the Gemara? So you've all heard about it, the famous Gemara in the, uh, the second parak in the sect of Shabbos. What uh, the Gemara is telling us about the greatness of Hillel Hazoki, that, uh, that he, he was a very humble person, a very great person. The, uh, the Gemara describes some of his uh, great qualities. And then the Gemara tells us that there came along uh, Nochri to uh, Hillel. And he said to him that he wants to yeah, become a girl. He wants to be Miskaya and become a Yid. And he said to him, yeah, uh, Yossi, tell me what I just said. That's, uh, he said that he wanted to. Huh? Uh, he, he said he wanted to the Torah on one stand on one foot. Yeah, but who said that? Uh, Nachri to. Uh, okay, so I prefer if you sit forward and not back. So the Nachri said to um, uh, Hilo that he wants to learn the whole Torah. Shani oimed al regal, regal ach. So I tell you, it's written there that before he got to Hillel, he went first of all to yeah. to Shammai Azoke. And he came to Shammai Azoke, and he said exactly that language. It's written that Shammai Azoke took a, a Amos opinion, how to call a measuring stick that they used to use for measuring, you know, the size, for, for measuring uh, uh, stones and wood and everything to build the building. He took this ama, an ama means like a, a, a measurement in, in length, ama sabinyan, he took it and he gave him a thwack with this uh, ama sabinyan, and he told him to, uh, you know, clear out of here, he doesn't want to be bothered by these uh, immature questions. So the same guy comes around to Hilo, and he says, tell him, Danish call a terra kurshaniyam at al achas, so Hill says to him, uh, okay, very good, my sir, and he said, you must... No one club. And he says that my the son Eloch will have break al Tavid. He said, What is hateful to you? Yeah, don't do it to your friend or to your neighbor. Uh, uh, and he said, Ze kola tera kula. This is the whole tera. The Edoch Pirusha. And the rest of it is only a explanation on this on this uh, cloud. Zil Gamir. He said you should go now and and learn. But it's Mashma that he didn't expect of him too much because it would appear from the Gemara that he did actually make him a get even before he went to learn. And he said, now you you got it, you can go and learn. And that's an interesting point that comes out there, whether he, whether he said to him go and learn before he made him into a gear, or he said to him first of all learn and then, uh, you know, by him, Shech, I'll make you into a into a gear, and that involves a very fascinating Shiloh as to whether somebody comes who wants to become a gear if you're allowed to learn Torah with him. Because uh, the Gemara says in the sect of the Sanhedrin that it's forbidden to learn Torah with a goy. It's forbidden to learn Torah with somebody who's not a yid. It's, um, so they want to say that if calls mother, if a person's not a yid, you can't learn Torah with him. So people say, well, yeah, how's he supposed to know anything? So they say you should only teach him certain things which are absolutely essential, or anything which is like Torah, Lishma, like Gemara and Mishnah, and all these in on him, uh, you can't, uh, you can't uh, teach him. So they want to bring from this, uh, there's a Marsha here. The Marsha says, and from that we see, or he wants to help upon him, observe that you are allowed to t- teach a a gear toira for the sake of him becoming a gear, and he said, "We see from this, yeah, because Hillel didn't make him a gear immediately. First of all, he said, 'I'll teach you the Torah, you go learn the Torah, and then I'll make you into a gear.' However, other great Achreinim, well, they differ with that, and they say, no, the, the shot was that he made him into a gear right from the, bed, the beginning, and then he taught him Torah, which means that you're not allowed to teach somebody uh, Torah, uh, that he hasn't become a yid." 
And that's uh, Rabbi Kiva Ega holds that way and other great uh, authorities. So it's an interesting uh, a matter in, um, an interesting matter in Halacha. However, he chose the opinion of, um, uh, 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 don't do to your, uh, uh, what is hateful to yourself, don't do to another person. A little chill said to him, and he said, this is the whole thing. So ask yourself to shout out, what does that mean? He didn't quote any posse. He didn't bring any riot from any place in the Torah. He just said to him, don't do this, and this is the whole Torah. Comes along Rashi over there. Rashi, based on that fact, that he didn't tell him any Lachera Pasik or didn't quote him any portion of the Torah, Rashi says that what he meant to say was that you must do everything not to make, as it were, the Avishta angry. In other words, whatever you wouldn't like being done to yourself, don't do to the, to the Avishta. That's what Rashi says. Rashi says that the, uh, it's based on the Pasik. Yeah, avicho al There's a pasik which says that the neighbor of yourself and the neighbor of your father, you mustn't abandon him or make him feel lost. And that's referring to the Avista. He said that Rea avicho means that. <laughs> that's what Rashi says. So Rashi says that he was telling him a big cloud that anything you feel which is not proper and you wouldn't like it to be done either to you or in your realm of life, then, then, then don't do it because the Avista also wouldn't want it. As is it. Then Rashi says, Lishna Hrina, another pshat, and he says that it's based on the Pasik we are have to Lereachoko. Come on. And he says that it means what he meant to say was that the whole, all the mitzvahs in the Torah, most of them are some way or another bordering around the concept of loving your fellow. And Rashi brings all sorts of examples. He says, for example, not to murder. <laughs> I mean, one is if you murder somebody, the sign you're lacking in loving other, other people. Not to steal. Not to uh, forcefully take away somebody else's property, which is also a form, the two forms of stealing in Russian Ukraine. Not to uh, commit adultery or things, you know, taking away something which is uh, rightfully uh, that of your, your neighbor, etc., etc., all sorts of phenomena that Rashi says we can see how they are linked with the connection and the love of people one to the uh, to the uh, to the other. So in that second shot, Rashi learns that it is referring to the Pasik Vio Haftalurayah. So in came, why didn't he quote him that Pasik? Why didn't he say Vio Haftalurayah? And he didn't quote him. He just said whatever is hateful to you don't do to the other person. And he said, Yeah, that's the whole terror. The rest of it is just a a description of a period. I mean, if that was the case, why didn't he tell him? So comes along the Marshua over there, and the Marshua, he's one of the the great Mephoshe Ha'ashas, that he makes uh, this observation. Uh, hello, I'll send you out, and that's not good for you right now. Don't lean on your hand either. Is um, uh, the Marshal says but that's very, very uh, strange that uh, he'll have told him in the negative yeah, and he told him what is hateful to you, don't do to a, yeah, a second person. So the Marshal says we see, and that's what we noticed at the beginning, that before we get to the mitzvah in the Torah, we go through a whole group of negative commands. Things which are yeah, they call it cancelling out negative activities. Don't hate somebody. Don't take revenge. Don't, yeah, don't guard a grudge. Don't gossip about him. The Marshal says, from that we see that a haftalur is built into a whole series of negative commandments. And there was the Marshal Achidish. Right? He says that even though it's written in a positive language, albeit haftalur achakamoycha, BMS, from that tomorrow we have to assume that we are have to lirach komoicha is BM is also like a negative commandment. Be it's a negative thing, and that's what the Gemara says. Whatever you don't like being done to you, don't do to 
other peoples, and that's the whole Indian from Virata or Africa. That's what the Masha said. But so if he's there, it's not called Kaf Muvan, why would a positive statement really end up uh, being a negative one? However, he's got a good case, the Masha. It is in the midst of all series of negative statements. <clears throat> and we see that Hillel Azokhen, yeah, he did in effect say it in a negative, yeah, a negative way. Well, that would tend to indicate that uh, maybe that is in effect the basis. And, like Rashi says, it might fit in with Zer Klau Godel Ba. Yeah, Zer Klau Godel Ba Rabbi Kiva says, because Rashi says that a lot of the mitzvahs, yeah, negative or positive have to do in a surrounding the central idea of not uh, interfering or not in any way being improper with other people's thing and other people's in your own. So the feast there would come out that Rashi when he said that cloud God over he was relying on the fact that you would sort of assume that the main thing in this life uh, according to Yiddish guide is not to interfere and not to negate and tread into the life of another person in any way that wouldn't be acceptable to you, yourself and that's why the word Komeicha was put in yeah, and that that's what Ahava means that all we can demand of human beings that type of Ahava to another person because it's not really shy a disinterested Ahava absolutely that somebody would have to honor the person, it's not realistic to expect as other. How do we realistically expect it if you take what he wouldn't like being done to himself and translate that into into action uh, as regards the other person? I say that's how we don't say. And that's how quite a lot of the great Mephoshim they go straight from that Rashi into this into the statement of the Gemara of Adam However. The question asks itself, you know, why would it be stated in a negative way like that? It still remains, you know, what we can't expect people to be really, you know, devoted to other people and they would really love somebody unconditionally. Only your whole devotion to other people is only based on what you wouldn't like being done to, your, to yourself, would you? Eh? I don't like other people doing that to me either. It's a defa. I thought the question what is really happening here. Comes along the Ramban, and the Ramban, he bears witness to the fact that like Sikrim, like Sitoyer, are also rather like we pointed out, homely examples of not taking vengeance by, by giving back a, 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 a spade or something. It's very sort of, um, you know, homely. Says the Ramban, it's deliberately like that. The Ramban says that there are lots of inyonim in the Torah which don't expect you to think of the other person at all. And that's all the dinim of you know, what we call damages and the zikin. If somebody damaged your money and he, he mummish damaged you and he let his uh, shawl walk into your vegetable garden or your vegetable strip and uh, eat up all of the, 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 how do you call them? Eat up all the um, uh, malafa funds over there, all the uh, uh, inyonim. Then uh, you know there's a din toira in the in the base uh, uh, in the base din. You have to go to the dayonim and you have to demand him that he repay you for the nezek that he yeah that he did. I look at him, oh, I kind of love this guy, you know. <laughs> no, you have to take him to the din and you have to demand him. You have to demand him man. Or it would be cholila or cholila if somebody did he killed somebody by a choist of nevoz in yoni which is shy to din in a foshet I can't come along and sit in the Sanhedrin and say oh what a rahman is this guy you know such a we all love him don't we you know it's let him free don't let <laughs> you can't do that uh, says the Ramban there's an union of the din Torah has to yeah, it has to be, and it's got to, as the expression has it, 
you create for dinner so hard that it could, the din has to even make a hole through the mountain. It's got to, it's got to reach its finality. The din him in the base of a din and in the Sanhedrin. And then the Ramban brings an even more fascinating example. And that is Rabbi Kiva himself, even though the Ramban doesn't make a big uh, issue out of the fact that it's Rabbi Kiva. But Rabbi Kiva himself says a most amazing halacha or din or inyan in the Gemara Masekta Baba Matiya. And the Gemara gets onto that over there talking about a din of rivets. What rivets is, uh, how do you call it, interest. That you're allowed to take interest from, from a yid. And uh, the Gemara is talking about dinim of, uh, of somebody who did take interest. Is he mochuyot to give it back? He took interest out of, a, of, out of a yid. Does he have to give back the, uh, the interest or does he not? There's a difference of opinion over there between uh, two of the great Amoraim as to whether he has to or he doesn't. So in, in, in Hebshire to that discussion, uh, the Gemara brings a Bryce. And it's written in the Bryce the following situation. What would be if two people who are going into... Where do you think they're going? Huh? Two people are going in the midbar. They're going in the desert, and there's no water. And biyodom shall echad. He's got a little container of of water. And if he drinks that water, then he will probably be able to make it to civilization if he drinks the water. But the other fellow will die. The other guy will die. So, says one opinion in the Brazer that they have to divide it up. And they both have to die. Says, so he says, for which? He said, Shaloi Yira Echot Bermises The one shouldn't see the passing of his friend. I stay comes on Rabbi Kiva, over on Rabbi Kiva, and he brings a posse in Bahar, where it's written, V'chai Achicha Imoch, that your brother must live together with you. You must always let your brother live together with you. And he says, Chayecha Koid Mim L'chayecha Chaverocha. And he learns that the word Imoch means that he's like, how do you say, Tafel to you, that is a tafel, he's like subservient to you. Chayachicha, only imok. You are the principal, and he is just. So if there's enough for both, then fair enough. If not, then you have to drink. If you're the one holding it, you have to drink, and unfortunately the other guy will pass away. While Chayacha, Kaidmim Lachaye Achicha. As is Rabbi Q, as they state in Rabbi Q. So that's quite an amazing heart. Yeah, quite amazing. A lot of Rabbi Kiva says, he went, uh, the amazing thing is that none of the great Roshonim bring that whole Shiloh to Allah. Not the Rambam, not the other great codifiers, not all the other great Roshonim that they wrote a uh, list of the mitzvahs or the halachas or whatever it might be. Nobody brings out the halacha and you can look around and you won't find it. <laughs> it's only in the latter period commentators that we find that some of them talk about practically la halacha about that question. Of a very few are the halakhaic authorities that actually enter into that question. Which means that Lachoira, to a certain extent, it will be left up to you, your own judgment, I get. We don't pass in one way or the one, one, one way or the other. However, some people hold that a filo, according to the Rabbi Kiva, where he says your life is before the other father's life, you have to look after your own life before the other father's life, that they would hold, that he would hold, Rabbi Kiva, that uh, they could throw lots. That they could throw lots, and whoever the lot fell out on, then he would drink the water and the other. <laughs> but that's a little bit of a, um, a, a sort of a courageous interpretation of Rabbi Akiva, because Rabbi Akiva says if you're holding the water, then your life is before the life of the other of the other person. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, there are a few discussions, of I wouldn't say it's a topic that uh, is you know, mercifully spoken about all over in Halakha. It's by the great authorities, they somehow, for reason, I could maybe suggest a reason in the Gemara over there. Uh, it's not really a lever to Halakha that the Gemara brought that, but I mean it's like a separate Halakha in its own right. Anyway, it's not, uh, we don't have a clear of din in the Roshanim, what should be the din. However, Rabbi Akiva does all that way. Rabbi Akiva holds. So ask yourself the Shaila, if Rabbi Akiva holds that way, then doesn't he limit himself somewhat? I mean, it's a rather sort of, you know, very hard sort of a, a psak. That if you got the water, you polish off the water and you get to the issue, and the other four guys just, uh, you know, he just left it. He just died. It's a, it's a rather sort of, you know, uh, sobering, a sobering thought. But if we don't pask and uh, we don't decide Mamishal Halokha, then maybe it could be left up one way. Yeah. One way or the But it, <laughs> and the far I remember once I was in the army and I was asked to speak in front of a, a group of guys. And just like some people here, I could see that these guys were all preferred to sleep. They didn't really want to hear what I was saying. Because people in the army are usually just fagged out any time you meet them. <laughs> it could be in the middle of the day, it could be in the late afternoon, it could be in the early morning. Like most of these people around here. It's, uh, they're always fagged out and they're always does and they're always sloughing and mooping and carrying on and objecting and all these sort of masses. Exactly the same thing in the army. So I saw that uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to get very far with this with these guys, if I just sort of say something nice, and say some sort of a purush or something, you know, even tell them a story. I, it's either, you know. So I hit them with this one. And I, I said, all of a sudden, two guys are going in the desert. <laughs> all of a sudden, they all started to wake up. They, you know, they, Ooh, wow. You know? <laughs> it's the sort of thing that could rush one in the time happen to soldiers. You know? so it could happen. I should be smiling. So they all opened up their ears and they all said to me, no, what is the, what is the law? You know, what is the law? So I told them, I don't really know, you know, because it's not really written clearly in great showing him, you know, what is the law? And uh, so they said, well, who was it? So I said, Rabbi Kiva. Well, I said, oh, Rabbi Kiva, he's really big, you know. So said, How come? He says that. So also one of the soldiers puts up his hand and he said, I'm telling you, he said, I would not be able to do that. He said, I would not be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to drink it off and watch the other fellow die. He said, if you're talking to me, he said, I would give it to the other guy. And I would walk off and die under a tree. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what one of the soldiers said. And I was really taken with that. I was really very amazed. Because That's what I hear, you know, I hear. <laughs> He's a Rahmani, you know, he can't sort of think that I'll just get out of the whole situation and leave the other guy die. And therefore he prefers that the other guy live and he would die. And so that's what he said to me. I said, well, look, I'm not sure if you'd be allowed to do that 100%, but I mean, I very much appreciate what you, I very much appreciate what you said. And quite a lot of the other soldiers, they were all of the opinion that, uh, it's interesting to see how you didn't uh, react, they were all of the opinion, uh, the first opinion is the, is the really right one, that they should split it, that they should split it up and both die. <laughs> that's, that's what they held. Very few people were able to accept that they should drink it off and let that <laughs> Anyway, whatever we see the Fisa comes along the Ramban, on the basis of that, the Ramban said, we see that this whole union of Yaatul and Yaakov Komoicha has got limitations, you know, it's, it's clear or not. You know, without, you know, if, you, if you've got a dim with your friend, you've got to take him to bed and you've got to demand that he pay you. Uh, and if he doesn't, then the bed in, in some ways is more clear to look after it if they, if they find out about it. All sorts of it. And in Dinah and Fosh, he's, he's right 100%. So I thought to show them what is. Really, this whole interview after the Rambam says a cloud. And the Rambam 
Ramban says it's only in matters of good. Only when Hashem helped you, that you have it good, then you have to share that good and you have to leave that good and you have to see anything which has got to do with benefit and good things and anything which is considered a blessing and a good thing, or that you have to see yourself as exactly equal to the, to the other person and you have to share it with him and you have to want it for him exactly like you want it for your. So, of anything which has already got to do with negativity, anything which has got to do with what human beings see to be our an undesirable matter. So there's already laws about that. And that can be a don of a nazikin, can be a din of nefashis, can be the smizer that we just have with Rabbi Akiva. And there the Torah is not unlimited. And there you have to go according to the dinim of the Torah. And if your Rabbi Akiva is a chosid, then you've got to pass it according to Rabbi Akiva. That's what he said. Sure. So in order to um, deepen our minds a little bit in this cloud godel of Rabbi Kiva, we just have to look up where it come from. And uh, here we're going to meet up with another very fascinating matter, which I saw in a saver the other day that a person brought it down as a, a whole Indian, and he didn't mention that it was brought down on the Roshamwe, <laughs> openly, according to that. So the Roshamwe says... Like this. Yeah, the Gemara says that the Rishami says that it's written you mustn't take revenge and you mustn't hold um, grudge. So the Gemara, the the, uh, the Yushami says to what is it compared? And it says to a man that's cutting meat with a sharp knife. He's cutting a, a steak or something and he's sniding with a knife and all of a sudden he missed the yeah, only he dug the knife into his hand, and he snided his hand with the, with the knife. Yes. So it says the Roshami, would it make sense for him to put the knife into the hand that was cut, and then he take the, uh, the, that hand that was cut, holding the knife, and cut the other hand? Why would he do that? Uh, he's taking revenge. Uh, his hand snided him, and if he has to snide back. <laughs> He's not too sure. Can't have a two. At least it. Very. So, so, so the great voice is saying, "What's wrong?" I mean, it's right. Your hand was, your hand was, uh, was, uh, was put down in, um, in the words of uh, what our Abayim was put down. Uh, what about a person hammering in a nail? You know, you're hammering, <laughs> and you're holding the nail. Why you hit your thumb? You say, "Wow." Well, you know, you, you hand you, you know, you put the hand into the other hand and hang your other thumb. <laughs> so what is the, what is the teret? The teret is, what does Yerushalmi mean? What it means is that it's all the same person. That your hand and you are all the, <laughs> are all the same person. You know I mean? <laughs> if you hit it, your other hand, you're just hitting it the other part of your etz himself. In other words, that a man is a whole shlemus and he's a whole whole build up of all of his details, and that they're all part of one et. And if, uh, if you do <laughs> with one part of yourself to yourself, it's absolutely ludicrous to hit yourself. You hit yourself back. Well, if he's there, we gain a, a, a sort of a an amazing idea that everything in a man is one thing. Everything, his whole being is made up exactly of what he is in all his detail. And that's what the, it's brought down in Shulchan The author brings it down that if you are without a head covering, you can't cover your head with your hand. I was Because your hand and your head are all the same entity. They're all the same essential entity. And therefore, if you put your hand over your head, it doesn't, it doesn't help to cover you. If you only got one cover on your head, then you can put your hand on your head. Because there's only one cover, then as a second cover, your hand can sort of be, as you call it, but it can be considered a covering. Or as a first covering for sure. And then a little fees there, the Rishon has introduced me to a whole concept that really everything is one. Well, every every in aspect of a man 
no matter what limit may happen to be in what detail in his body or where it is or what it's doing, it's all him. Yeah. And it says, immediately after that, without any apparent real sort of, but obviously with a connection, brings you to I had heard that it was talking about Loisikim Baloi Sitoya, but we saw in the in the verse that immediately after that comes Be'ahatul Reyachakom. Why is it Rishami says Be'ahatul Reyachakom? Why? Rabbi Kiva Oima Zeklau Gadol Ba. Here is my the Rishami. This is a great general rule in the Torah. Ben Azai Omer Zeh Sefer Tildes Adam. Now this is a pasuk in Bereishit. At the end of the Chet Eitzadas and all the main things that happen in uh, in Seder Bereshit, after that the verse sums up and it says, "Zet Sefer Tildes Adam." This is the book of all the generations of man. Beyim Broy Elokim Adam in the day that uh, the Eved created man. Be Demus Elokim Asa Oisay. The Eved made him in the Demus of the of the of the of the Eved so that's a posse. Zer tell the sort of so comes along Ben Azai and he says, Zer tell this Adam, Zer klau godel mize. He said that's an even bigger klau than the after the after come. Come with. So we see that it's not so simple. That that's what the an open much like is between Rabbi Kiva and Ben Azai as to which is the biggest klau. The Torah. When Rashi says that cloud God of the Torah, he's, he's careful to say, "Oh, my Rabbi Kiva." That's Rabbi Kiva's opinion. Or oh, there's other opinion, there's other opinion which says that that first in Bereshit, or oh, that is a bigger cloud. There, safer, yeah, tell this order. I saw, so what sort of a cloud is that? There, safer, tell this order. What's the big? What's the big cloud? What's the big general? Yeah, the big general rule, and it's even bigger than Rabbi Kiva's club. Even bigger than Rabbi Kiva's general rule. So come along, certain of the great uh, early period uh, commentators, what they bring the, the same Maflikas in the Teres Kahanim. It's also written against the same Maflikas, not in the Rishonim, but in the Teres Kahanim. It's written exactly the same thing over there. And they want to say that it's like this. If we go mitzat after the reyach ha then you can say, well look, I'm only mechuyev to love my fellow man like I love my... So, well, I'm an easygoing guy, you know, I get on, I dead. Is a matter, I feel that somebody throw rotten tomatoes at me, or chazen was, or somebody will get up in the base of medras and absolutely just make mincemeat up. <laughs> completely insult me and afraid of us. Yeah, I'm an inter- I'm an easy going guy. I don't worry about such things. You know, if that happens to the other guy, I also don't need to worry. You know, <laughs> let him also suffer. You know, we'll all be together. You know, we're all good friends. If you have to live, I thought, come on, just like you are. You know, he's not going to worry particularly if the other guy undergoes what they call in Yiddish business. <laughs> Insults and all sorts of bad things. I don't mind about these things. However, if we go according to the cloud of Ben Azai, then they say like this that Ben Azai didn't mean the beginning of the Pasik, he meant the end of the Pasik. Now that's already a little bit tricky, but it's in, in the Yerushalmi and in the Tereshkahani, it's already written the beginning of the Pasik. But anyway, what's written at the end? Yeah, in the day that the Abishta created him, and he created him in the Demus of the Abishta. So they said, that's what uh, um, Ben Azai is hinting at. Ben Azai is saying that when you've got a mensch, another person, you've got two entities. You've got Reacho, he's your, he's your friend. And on that basis, you, you should at least feel something for him. And then he's also the Demus. He is the image. He's the image of the. He's the image of the Abishta. And I mean, how could you possibly say, "Oh, I don't mind if I have a Bizyanus, How can I possibly say that he has to have the Bizyanus? Yeah, because he's got Mamish the Demus of the. He's got the Demus of the Abishta on him. 
So I, I, I'm also not supposed to just say, oh, I'll take this Yadin without any worries, because you also got the Demuta <laughs> And the one who gave you, he, you also got the similarity of Hashem on you, and the one who gave you all the insults, he should have woken up to that before he started giving you the insult. Whatever they say, that that's the cloud God there, because that broadens everything that in every human situation there's the human part of it and the divine part of it. And the divine part of it is not just a, a commandment that everybody's going to try and find what is the commandment. It's actually the, the image of the Avishta in every human. And particularly in the... Whatever they say, that's a greater cloud than Rabbi Kiva's cloud. And there are other Pirushim, but most of the Pirushim draw on that idea that really Ben Azai is referred to the end of the verse, not to the beginning. Most of them base themselves on that idea. That he, he didn't really mean Zer Sefer tells us, oh no, what he meant was the end. Yeah. But the Musa al also is. So comes along, there's a, a Mephorish here on the Yerushalmi called the Tia in uh, Yerushalayim. That's what he's called. And he has a very fascinating idea, but I don't know if it helps us a great deal with the general you know, difficulties that we're facing here. And he says that uh, the, the whole point of, uh, of Ben Azai is to say like this, that usually in the creation and in the creation of man, so we find that the word Elohim is used. It's well known in all the days of the six days of creation, the name of Hashem, Elohim, is used the whole time. So he said that the word Elohim is really a, a plural. And yet, nonetheless, of course, it refers to, our, to Hashem. So he said that the word Elohim has gotten itself this amazing uh, power to join together two opposites that even though there is a multiplication really all that multipl multiplicity is really all one. one. That's what Alan said us before and that's the remnants of the word echad, one meaning a union of all sorts of factors because the word for singular meaning no other one apart from him at all is yachid, not echad so the fact that we say yeah, echad uh, that is a, uh, 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 an, indicus, an indication that in the creation there did come about a multiplicity on a certain level. But nonetheless, the Abish unites it all together. So he says that that's the word Elohim. That the word Elohim indicates that in their very name. Because it's a plural word. Elohim means, yeah, literally, a plural word. Judges. That's what it means. And a fact, so he said, we see from that that even though the Abish have brought about all sorts of, yeah, how do you call it, amazing uh, multiplicity. Nonetheless, he united all them yeah. all together. And it's written that this is the safer tale, sort of the Bora Elohim. He also says that ultimately you have to sort of read the answer to the posse. Yeah. So what do we see? The purpose of the Abish to making the safer tale, this Odom, was that man should also be. Uh, live up to the fact that he's also a demus of Elohim and even though he sees that there are other people he should consider them all as one. As one. In other words that he should see the whole multiplicity of, the, of, of humanity and he should look at them like the apes looks at them. That they're all just one entity and they're all one and he should live exactly the way the apes uh, expect of him being as he is a demus of the apes. And that's what the Abishta wrote in the book, there, safe until this other, yeah, that this is the whole inner of man, that he's got to be, how do you call it, a one and only uh, entity in the world, that he joins everything together. And he unites all forces and all we know them together in one. And he said, that's a bigger cloud than Rabbi Akiva. <laughs> Rabbi Akiva says it, it's only, yeah, even though you might be able to, Say, well, maybe that's what Rabbi Akiva means also. He says, however, the ultimate difference is that this was written right at the beginning of the, uh, of the etch of creation 
is the Seder of the Torah before you get to Sefer Vayikra. And therefore it's got a mile that it's uh, Kodum in the Torah and so on and so forth. So that's a little bit of a Deichak. It's not so simple to say a Pshat like that. I'll hop upon him. He's got a point. And Mamela, we see this idea, very rich idea that he brought us in the middle of his Pirush, that you have to be able to unite things together by being the Dukma to El Kim. And that's the greatness of the Shem El Kim. That's it's an un- unbelievable singularity of this name of Hashem, Shem El Kim. However, still ask yourself a, a, a question and a view. What is really this difference between Rabbi Kiva and, and Ben Azai that they differ in such a way as to yeah, what does it really mean? We are after the Reach of Koh. They said that on the Pasik, we are after the Reach of Koh. Come on, and Rabbi Kiva says, Zek Slau God of Taylor, and he says, Zek Slau Od Yotergado. You know, did he agree that we are after the Cloud God, but he said, This is an even bigger cloud. So now we have to bear witness and we have to notice that you're familiar with the fact that Rabbi Kiva and Ben Azai are amongst the four people that they went into there. You know, they, they had this great spiritual experience which was called uh, the entering the um, uh, the orchard, you know, the, what's called the entering of the Pardes. In Yant, they represent the two extremities. That Rabbi Kiva, he went in and he came out by Basholim. Niknas Bisholem Be Yotzer Bisholem Ve'ilu Ben Azai Yeah, he went in and he Yeah, he died It's written hits his way One in it In other words, Ben Azai He just Went in and he took off That is He just And therefore in Exodus He's compared to the sons of Aharon You know, they went into The Ben Ezra claims that they went into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, Mom, the Ebenezer. He says they went much into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, but they just went in and... And that's what we have at the beginning of this week's Pasha. Yeah, Acharei Moishnei Bnei Aharei. Yeah, B'kor Vosom, Lifnei Hashem Vayo Musu. And that's the famous Shaila. If they went close to Hashem, how come they... How come they died? The more you become close to the Abish, the more you should be alive. Yeah, was it B'kor Vosom, Mel Hashem Vayo and that's the whole beer that they just couldn't stay anymore in this world they just wanted so much the Abish said that they got confused what does it mean to be close to the Abish <laughs> and they said we are going to be close to him and they just went out that's Ben Azai it's written clearly in so this is Ben Azai and the Ben Azai under the same approach so I still tell you isn't that interesting? That's the two ends of the extreme. And Rabbi Kiva says that we have to learn how much is a cloud god deal. On its own right, that, that is the cloud god of the Torah. And Ben Ali said, no, the sinner with the Zetel is Adam. Well, that's an even greater uh, cloud god deal. Yeah, we should do it. Now, Mark Kilo, I ain't in bed. Yeah, but. <coughs> So it comes along the river of Tom Tedek, you people are all familiar with the famous uh, portion in Derek Mitzvah Sefer called Mitzvah Avashis. Wow. Uh, so you're, you're familiar with the famous Mime of it. And the Tom Tedek deals with that Gemara that we bought earlier, with the girl that he came to Hilo, and that Hilo answered him in the negative. And the Tom Tedek asked that question openly, why did he say to him in the in the negative, why didn't um, why did he answer him in Aramaic? Well, that's really a bit easy. To understand. The, these guys didn't talk Russian Kurdish, but maybe a bit of Aramaic they understood. So he answered him in a uh, in Aramaic. He didn't say to him in uh, you know in Russian Kurdish. But why did he just say to him in Aramaic the translation of the word and he put a tafki in the negative. So very bekitzi, you're all familiar with the fact that the Tzema Tzedek says oh, that's an amazing idea. And he says that really that is a very positive thing. But in order to get that positivity, you've got to say it in the, in the negative. We, 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 what does that mean? What is the chart? Uh, the Tzema Tzedek says that your automatic reaction, just imagine if somebody comes up to you, 
And he says to you, look here, man, I'm sorry, you're not doing Beseda in this and this and this. And he shows you openly that you're not proper in some matter or other. So what is your first reaction? Your first reaction is to say, oh, no, you don't realize that I really mean this and this and that's why I do it and that's why I'm really right. And if you can't prove that you're right, yeah, then what do you say? Well, it's a big Rahmanas on me. If only you realized what pressure I was on and what sort of Rahmanas it is, then you would realize that I, you know, I'm not really doing wrong. I mean, that's just the way it has to be. I can't help myself, you know, etc., et, etc. This is the way, automatically, you read. I said, I didn't. So he said, well, if you didn't say that to him when you're going away, you think to yourself, oh, yeah, if these people really knew what I'm going through, and they really knew my situation in life, they wouldn't criticize me, they would even praise me. I mean, and you spend whole hours rectifying yourself deep inside your heart that these people really don't understand you. <laughs> or that they're not right, and that you're really right. So by the time you actually get out the Christian Shachamita and after everything and you're putting your head down on the pillow you end up with the conclusion that you're right <laughs> by the time you're already sloughing and snoring yeah, you're right already <laughs> so it's, everything's fixed up it's alright <laughs> even said with Venus but now you manage with him as well he showed the age that you're really right <laughs> so this is the thing what is the normal reaction you know, what is it that a person cannot stand, he cannot stand somebody finding a fault in him and he immediately, yeah, uh, somebody finds a fault, he immediately has got 50 explanations to show that it's not only not a fault, it's an acceptable and even supportable and in the end he ends up being noble because people don't understand him and how great it is of him that he doesn't insist that people understand him, etc. So what do we see? That the normal opinion of a person is that he hates being told what is the truth about him. And my mother said that that is what is sanui, my sonny la. That which is hateful to you is you being told the truth about yourself. That's what you hate. So he said that's what you have to do to the other. Yeah to the other person. In other words, what is hateful to you, don't do to the other person. Don't find fault with him. Don't say, look here, you are really doing a wrong thing. No, malachatkila, see it his way. See it with all the excuses and with all the inyanim, <laughs> all the, yeah, Hiroshi, why he has to be that way, and you end up with that conclusion, oh yes, it's really Rahmanas on him, and he's really right, and it's really not true, there's been no fault, etc., etc. Et so that's what it means, don't do what, don't do to him what is hateful to, to you. And so that's what he says, how can that possibly be? How can he have the quirk to do such a thing? So he says, because you really love yourself, you don't love anybody else, you love yourself. And he said, that's such a love that it covers all crime. Which means that even though you know you're not Bethsaida, oh no, you really are, you are, you are, you are. And it's, it's a pity on you and it's a Rahmane. All because of your love of yourself. Well, that's how you're supposed to love the other person. But if you see anything which looks to you in your physical eyes not to be good about the other person, you must immediately have 50 to root him and you must end up with the idea that really it's a Rahmanus on him and really yeah, if everybody was in this situation they wouldn't do differently etc 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 et, 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 and you have to end up loving <laughs> I say that's what the Tamil Tzadik says oh, that hidden in that negativity is really a tremendous positive Positivity, and it's almost like taking a human weakness and turning it the other way around into a the highest human nobility. In other words, it's your weakness which is so human that you always got an answer, and you would never admit that you didn't. You, you would never see that you did anything wrong. Well, that's the way you have to look at other at other people. And it's brought down the famous story. You know, the you, you, you guys heard of the. The altar bells are up, there are barren you, and there are bells. And the Friedrich Rebbe said about him that he was a Ish Kodesh fool. And uh, the Friedrich Rebbe wrote a funny letter, I got a copy of the letter at home. 
So famous miser. And he was so uh, holy that he almost had no flesh. You know that he was just a, uh, he weighed about I don't know three or four kilos. So he he was just, he had no body at all. He just had bones and a little bit of flesh. And two of his uh, uh, followers could just pick him up with their fingers underneath his elbows and carry him around. He was, he, he was just so uh, you know not shy to this world. The club. So when he came to uh, when he came to Israel. Uh, he, he, he says that he has to live in, uh, uh, in Tel Aviv in uh, the winter and in Yerushalayim he can live in the summer only because uh, it's cold in Yerushalayim in the winter and he just couldn't take the cold he had no he would overcoats and everything wrapped around him he couldn't take the cold and in Tel Aviv it's warmer in the, in the winter therefore he could at least summon another with a lot of overcoats and a lot of things he could sort of somehow another bear the cold <laughs> Otherwise, he couldn't possibly. <laughs> so he only went to Yerushalayim in the, in the summer. Even then, he was cold. He used to wear his big overcoat, his big fur around. Even in this very hot day. <laughs> so they say about him that when he first came to Tel Aviv, the first Shabbos he was in Tel Aviv, they took him into the place in the morning where the, the shul was, and he saw all these cars driving down Elmhurst Street, you know, the main street in Tel Aviv. He saw all these cars driving, and all of a sudden he said, oi, oi, and he grasped his head and he started to fall, and he was in this terrible state of, uh, in the day. they didn't know how they are going to get him right, you know, they t- they're supposed to be taking him up the stairs, he's supposed to appear in front of the tip and Davin or do something, you know. and he was just in this terrible state, you know. So they thought that he was upset and people would bring the whole shop. I thought that's why he was upset. So one of the big uh, Chassidim went over to him and said, Listen, Rabbi, don't take it to heart. That's the Matzav, you know. What can we do? You know, what a terrible thing it is. But, you know, that's just the Matzav. You just have to, you have to accept it. You, know, you just have to take it easy, you know. But you've got to realize it. That's the way it is. He said, What do you mean? He said, This is the way it is. Can't possibly be. So, uh, <laughs> So in the end, they worked out from him that he thought that, that he was of the opinion that these people were traveling because of Pekuach Nefesh. By him, it was absolutely clear that if Yidin were traveling on Shabbos, it was only because of Pekuach Nefesh. So he said there must be some epidemic. Something must be happening to Yidin, and that's why he can't take it. He can't look at all this terrible uh, uh, situation that Yidin must be going through if there's so many people traveling to the hospital. And he genuinely believed that the people were traveling to the hospital. Though he couldn't possibly take it. Yes. <laughs> In other words, that he only saw Malachat Kila, he, he didn't see the way we see. He just saw right from the beginning. He only saw the good. I'm sorry. I'm going to say the Rebbe, the Talmud Tzedek, that's why you have to look at other people. You look at other people <laughs> as if their, their suffering has brought them to what it is. That's got nothing to do. And, and that's I'll have to wear a cough. Yeah. Well, if he's there, it's really a very, according to that, it's a very positive thing, even though it goes through the negative. In other words, it's like this whole concept that to get to the real positive, you've got to go through the, you know, through the negative. In other words, we couldn't put it for it so high. And that's like the author of reason in Tanya chapter 26. Well, the author of reason that how can you look at, at suffering in, uh, as a positive thing? You have to first of all see the negative and understand the deep inside. That's really the, the positive. That really that's the most pious possible thing that Hashem could could do. If you look up in chapter 26, uh, uh, and you'll see the whole uh, Indian over there. In other words, it's a from our understanding of the negative. We come to the appreciation of the tremendous positive. So on that basis, I don't want to hold you guys up. I'd like to move just a little bit further into this Maklekes now between Rabbi Kiva and Ben Azai, and that will bring us back to to the Rashi. We'll come back to where we started. Just very, very brief. And we can say that based on that type of principle, we see then that uh, uh, what Hilal Azoki said to uh, to this um, uh, Goy that came to to, to, to be Mitzkaya, had he called to, uh, to become a Yid, and he told him that or that negative, what looks to be a, a negative cloud, a negative general rule, or really, therefore some people say that's what he meant. And the Tli Yoko and his Pirish Torah, 
he says that this guy was really a, a very learned and, and very meaningful guy. He really wanted something. He wanted to become a yid in a high way, in a genuine way. And ever he said that you should teach me the whole Torah that I'm standing on one foot. You know, the foot means like a basis, you know, like a, a yisod. And what it meant to say was that he wanted to know what was the real secret of Yiddishkeit and what Kilo bound Yiddishkeit all to all together that he should sort of have something and that will sort of unite and, and unify and inspire everything that he's going to be doing in detail. Now that's a very interesting shot. And if uh, Hillel Zohar looked for this unbelievable secret and he said it to him without the verse because he couldn't really expect him to know the verse at that point. What do you think about it? He, he not to know the verse we have to learn. And therefore he will put it in the Aram. He didn't mention any verse. And he told him an unbelievable yeah, secret. So what? what is the secret? What? What? Let's try and understand now. What is the secret? And why does Rabbi Kiva say one Indian and Benazai put it into a Indian where the Avish does Kiva there? And it's more that you're worried about the Avish than you are about the about the ants of a human being. As they come to it. We can say like this. And here we, we're sort of, um, how do you call it, ad living slightly, but Hashem, Hashem should know. What is the whole union of Rabbi Kiva and Ben Azai? What, what is Kiva the difference between them? The there is it well known that Rabbi Kiva, uh, he was a Ben Geri. He wasn't Mami Shagir, but he was a son of Geri. And he didn't get a proper education, Rabbi Kiva. We know the whole story of what the Gemara brings in the sect of Pesachim and in the sect of Tainius. What the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Kiva grew up until he was 40 years old and he was a, he called, uh, an Amho or a Tzad, he called, uh, an ignoramus. You know, he, he, he didn't know anything. And uh, he was also against and he disliked and he opposed learned people as a one and he even said very you know, harsh and unpleasant things about Talmud Chacham, about learned people. And then all of a sudden, Rabbi Kiva made this immense and unbelievable alteration in his life, and he devoted himself uh, to Torah in such a way that he became almost the greatest single figure in the development of Torah Shabbi al that we have. Until the Gemara says in the sect of Sanhedrin that all the Brises and all the uh, Tosefters and all the Gemur uh, and the Mishnayas and everything, all of them all went through Rabbi Kiva. He taught all of them, and to a certain extent he's like the core <coughs> that gave the okay to many, many, many of the things in Torah Shabbat Shabbat, which were really started off by individuals, Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Ishiya and other people. They, but Rabbi Kiva dealt with the whole general body of all the material. So, I mean, that's an immense task. I mean, that's, this is mind-boggling. I mean, that, 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 that. One person should got to literally go through the whole Teresh of Balpeh and sort it out in a way and make it acceptable and put it in the right order and the whole thing. Just, just, a, I'm just unbelievable. And that's Rabbi Kiva. And he started when he was 40 years old. I mean, how much time does that leave a person? Yeah, and a person who's 40 years old is already a little weaker and he's a little... Not al you know, uh, fresh, that he called uh, freshness and all those in honor that somebody who is uh, uh, 12 or 13 uh, years old. And if uh, we see that Rabbi Kiva is this unbelievable koya of Milmatala, uh, this unbelievable power and indication of the greatness of Aveda Milmatala, Milmatala Maid. In other words, of being in the world and nonetheless breaking through the limitations of the world in the highest way, showing that the, that the created being can be and has in himself an unlimited aspect to it. That he has a created being that's got an unlimited power. Because he started off without knowing what was a telemilakim. He didn't know what it meant telemilakim. He only learned it about it later. Rabakim. Masha, we could say to Ben Azai, Rabbi Shimon Ben Azai, he represents another koyach altogether. He represents a koyach of people who never have to do with this world. 
And therefore, he's, he's on on, but Ben Azai never married. He never married, never had children. Well, he did marry. It's not true. He married, but a, a few days later, he divorced. And after that, he said he's never going to marry again. He never had children at all. Famous Arif has been again to Ben Azai. And Mamela Ben Azai was a person that he was right from the beginning uh, completely and utterly committed only to things how they are. No Mamela. He didn't really understand what this whole business of down here was about in this world, making a whole fuss about this world. <laughs> he couldn't figure it. Well, and therefore he's called us for Russian petticoat, power and strength, almost like a tweak of a, a brand, you know, of unbelievable burning power of going upwards in fire. That's Ben Azza. And therefore that's what happened to him when he when he got into this great experience, he just went to he couldn't take it. He just went up, hit it to him, oh my, he just went up like fire, like the banana. And if Ben Azai, he says that you've got to look from Elakus downwards. Anything which you don't see the Elakus in it, it's not worth messing around with a proclaim. And this whole world is just completely and utterly, it's only made to get away from it. And the whole purpose that the able to put you in the world, that you should learn to be a skillful athlete, how to run away from it. That, that's the ultimate task. That's been us. And there's certain people like that. I mean, how about that? Maybe they have a point. <laughs> Could be they have a point. However, Rabbi Kiva wasn't like that at all. Rabbi Kiva was a person who was in the world. And he'd been through the world. And he knew that the ultimate tachlis was to make peace, surely, between the Irish and the, and the world. So never, Rabbi Kiva says, what is the cloud god in the Torah? What well, a cloud god of the Torah is beyond after the reyach or komoicha. You gotta take reyacho. He's your uh, 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 neighbor. He's your friend and he's close to you. And you gotta handle with him like you handle. In other words, you're in the limitation of this world, but you wanna go up and elevate, but you wanna elevate the world together with you. And you want to take everything with you, but that's an unbelievably difficult task. Are you going to be together with the other person in that general uh, Inyan? And therefore, Rabbi Kiva said, when it comes to the Etim Inyan, of who's going to carry on the task, yeah, either you or the other person, then you've got to carry on the task. It's not that he just means you've got to be selfish. In a way, he means that you can't possibly uh, putter yourself from this unbelievable responsibility. Uh, that you have. Colloid, that it's not the situation of one container of water, then that's what you've got to be with the other person. Over oh, that reg here, uh, eight miles such, you've got to take the responsibility and you've got to accept that. Oh, but only in that case. And ever the Alter Rebbe brings in the in Tani, in the Geras Hachu, in the, in the Geras HaKoyedesh, and the Alter Rebbe brings down a famous uh, statement that the Alter Rebbe brings over there, that, uh, that Gemara, and he said, Rabbi Kiva didn't say that. Rabbi Kiva only said that in that particular case. Abba, that you should have all the good things for Shabbos. You should have Chont and Kugel and, uh, and, and uh, Bosh Shomain and Yai and Yosh and, and your neighbor should be uh, hungering away for a piece of challah. Then that's not what Rabbi Kiva meant. For that he didn't mean the Chayach me. Then he, he meant that the other guy's life is more important. And therefore there's another Rabbi and another of the Kiva, the altar brings him to the beginning of Hilda Shabbat. You guys learn Hilda Shabbat. Right at the beginning of Hilda Shabbat, Rabbi Kiva says, I say Shabbat Chochoyo. You should make your, your Shabbat like a weekday. Be out Don't borrow from other people. Don't take from other people. Uh, have a very, very simple Shabbat. Because other people need it maybe more than what you do. In my middle, we see that Rabbi Kiva didn't say that cloud. Only in that one and only moment. And that's what the Altar ever said. The Altar ever brings uh, in, in Tanya and the Geras HaKoyedish that, that Rabbi Kiva, he said in that one particular case where there's only one bottle of water and one person can survive or, 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 or both of them are going to pass away, then you have not just so much the right to insist on your own life, it's your responsibility to carry things further. You can't pass that on to somebody else. 
and my little dental we learn it that way, it fits in very good. They only said it in such a case of a zikha and a vada, that where it comes to you having everything nice for Shabbos, and another person to be scratching around for a piece of challah, then Chas B'Shol and Rabbi Kiva didn't say that. At the snitch gizok, then he said, on the contrary, you know, the other person is much more important, incomparably more important uh, than what you are, because we are half to the reach of the komeicha, or zeh klau gadol ba, about Torah. That that's the whole union of the Torah is dafkit to feel that you and everybody else are all together in this elevating of the of the world and changing the world the way it is. And you don't see the Elikus in the world. You don't look at another person and see only the demus of the of a sheikh. You see another person, and you got to handle with him on a human level and draw that upwards uh, into Elikus. He looked at another. He said, "No, you look only where you see the divine. If you don't see the divine, then Eima Ha'Eisik himself." In other words, that everything is only good that starts with Chachil or Mila. You don't have anything to do with this world yeah, right from the beginning. And if uh, that would be the basis of their difference, and therefore Rashi only brings Rabbi Kiv, he doesn't bring Ben Arthur. Everybody says, why didn't Rashi uh, here on the Torah, since he's going into which is the cloud god, why does he only bring Rabbi Kiv? And he says, there cloud god, but I tell you, though, he should have thought of at least mention that uh, Ben Arthur didn't hold that way. Yeah, why didn't he say? And if uh, we could suggest that that's what Rashi's trying to, to indicate that the whole Indian of even the positivity of, of this mitzvah is based on elevating the world together with other human beings as human beings and to turn the world into Elokut and to reveal that the world Kamoishuhu not only is just a clear to Elokut but it's Elokut in the human sense and Ben Ali said no you got to first of all if you see Elokut in the world then it's okay if you don't then you just have to keep away from it and that's what happened to him, but now he just went away altogether. And if uh, we could say that that is a, an amazing cloud, and it, it, so it boils down if he's there, that you don't look at another person. Yeah, the truth is that he is but the Muselaki. <laughs> oh, that's not your business. When you see another person, you have to feel him as a person. And my Mashpir said to me that the basis of all Avas is is feeling the enemy. You have to feel that a person's matter. And you haven't got time. You know the famous story about Ramesha Malay Misasov. You know Ramesha Sasov, you never heard of Ramesha Malay Misasov. He was a Talmud for the Red Miller. He was a Gora. He was a Gora from the great uh, Talmudian Talmud of the, uh, the Mike. He actually saw the Mike. And he was uh, an unbelievable, uh, his great thing was Avas is well. He had this unbelievable Avas is well. And he had a he, he learned from Abzushia, he learned the cloud that you have to use everything in this world to serve the Avisha, even bad midas and unpleasant midot and unpleasant things you have to learn and serve, uh, learn from how to serve the, the Avisha. Like it's put in uh, Yom Yom that Abzushia said to learn from a thief, you know, have to learn from a thief how to serve the Avisha, that he's obstinate and he never gives up and he always keeps coming back. <laughs> Anyway, that's, uh, that's what Rav Zusha said. So, uh, Meisha Leib Sashevet, he said you, you have to learn from Apikurus. Everybody says you have to learn from Apikurus. I mean, I said this more, you know. An unbeliever. A non-believer, a denier. You have to learn from him. So, so, so how do you learn from Apikurus? So he said, somebody comes to another Jew and he says, look here. Uh, the, this uh, uh, person in need, he says to the other Jew, look, I'm really in a terrible matter. I really need help. You know, I, I can't go on like this. You must help me uh, do something to help. Do something. The other person says, oh, yes, I'm really sorry for you. But don't worry. The Rebbe should have told. Hashem will help. Don't worry. Hashem will help. So Rebbe Shalev said, no, you have to, when that happens to you, you have to put Hashem out of the picture. You don't, you don't leave Hashem in the picture anymore. Because what you're really doing is saying, oh, Hashem will help you, but you, you don't want to do anything. So therefore you, you put it on Hashem and you say, Hashem will help. So he said, at that particular moment, you have to be like an Epicurus, and you have to say, there's no Hashem, there's only me, and I've got to help you. <laughs> in other words, that ain't no Konami, the aim is to help you if you help, if you help him. But you can't just look at the poor guy that's suffering and say to him, oh, oh, yes, I shouldn't hold, you don't worry, I shouldn't hold, it's anymore. 
Isn't that amazing, eh? <laughs> In other words, that there's even a place to learn from it. <laughs> so that's Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva is goes with Rabbi Shalom Sata Vashita. Rabbi Kiva says, Ahavtul Reacho Kamoicha, Kamoicha, people like that. Not the, the Moose of the Avista, not only good things and divine things, no, with all about the we are going to work. We're going to turn the world, we're going to show that the world, who is our people? And how this Israel means helping other people uh, to come to that recognition through us being aware of all of our limitations and our difficulties, one with the, the other, and being sympathetic and understanding and feeling you know, the difficulties of the other person so that you forget about what might look to be his fault. And that's Rabbi Kiva. And that's what Rashi meant. The Zeh Klau Gadu Batoidor. And that's the Ikya Inan of a, of a Baltuva. That's the whole Nakuda of, of a Baltuva, like we pointed out. And that's Rabbi Kiva. The Rabbi Kiva is the Rabbi of all the Bali. He's the Rabbi of all the, of the Bali Tishuvids. And all the, 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 the peoples that they want to become better. No matter the Maila, from above to, from below to above. They want to change things, they want to change the world, and they want to bring Moshiach Papoyo. They want to bring Moshiach Papoyo Mamish, and that means, first of all, we prepare the world in, like they say, after the Rehu Kamoicha, the children say in the 12th Sukhim, Omar Rabbi Akiva, Zedek, Lau Godoba, Batoiro, and they shray out, and they make a, a whole big rash about it, and it's affected the world. People are already beginning to. To, to notice this fellow, what's his name, Bavia uh, he came out the other day, well, not just the other day, and he said that Yud Alef Nissen is a day of, uh, of general chinuk for the whole of America. And he said, who said that? He said, the great spiritual leader of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, yeah? the American president. You're like, you're like Ben Azi, you're not even tried to develop it. He doesn't even know what about was. <laughs> I wouldn't have known either if I hadn't heard of it, but it's from somebody else. Oh, anyway, I don't know who it is that he said that you've got to teach the people of America the principles of education the way the laboratory ever said. That's how he came out. In other words, that each president has got the right to either continue that or to... <coughs> so, so far they've all continued it. pushed it the same as the one before. They've come out and they said that... Uh, and you see that the Rebbe's words hit these people. Now, the other day there was this uh, a day of remembrance of all the Chayalim that have been killed. 24,000 of them. Rahman in Atlanta. Oh, you see. Yeah, since the, uh, the Independence War... 24,000 soldiers have been killed. So they had this uh, uh, big uh, meeting out there, and uh, Netanyahu was there, and Perez, and all the big, you know, the big knobs and the Sidhuis, they were all there. And who did they invite to speak? They invited to speak the, the father of the, of the wife of the young couple that were killed in the base Chabad in uh, Bombay. He spoke, and he spoke in front of all of them. Nyan, what did he say at the end of his speech? He said, "Ani mami b'munashleima b'vias hamoshiach yavim heid of your main mami." That's what he said. And then he said, "Shema Yisrael havayel akein havayachon." Now just imagine, here he's got all these big Zionists, the biggest so-called Zionists in the world, whatever's left of it, <laughs> the so-called representatives of. Zionists throughout the whole world, but they believe that the only thing that saves the Jewish people is the Medina. And what did he say in front of all of them? And they all absorbed it. And some of them wiped their eye. And he said, And then he said, And then he said, And in the middle, before that, in the middle of his speech, he mentioned the Rebbe. And he didn't say which Rebbe he meant. He just said the Rebbe. And they all knew who he meant. So God of Netanyahu, yeah, I don't want to say anything too much in praise of him, but he got up and he made a speech and people were out of their cave. They couldn't believe that he was saying it. 
he started saying that the whole thing now is the Jewish identification and we have to strengthen Jewish education and we have to see that everybody recognizes himself as a Jew and the importance of the Jewish world and Jews and Yidden and that we have to make more Tanakh in the schools and not just Tanakh but they have to learn Divrei Torah that's what he was saying. I don't know. People said, look at that. What's up with this guy? It's a little normal, is it? It's not normal. It's a little regular. It's not normal. So who is behind all that? Learn by which you're You guys wake up. The Rebbe put all this into the world, and that's what's making these people, they're like Machogim, because they're like these little things inside the watch. You know, they tick around, and, and the Rebbe's ticking them. He's ticking them around. <laughs> so they start to open up their mouth. I tell you, so I don't know what's happening to them. That <laughs> For, on this big beamer, when that poor man in the morning in Klan, he lost his daughter and his son in law in such unbelievable circumstances, when he said those two things, certain people were seen wiping there. There we are. This is the river. <laughs> and why did Obama come out and why did he say, oh yes, this is the day of, uh, you know, and this is in tribute to the great spiritual leader, the Lubavitch Rebbe. We have to talk the whole day only about how to educate the young people. Yeah. How they say, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> where did he get that from? He got it from the Lubavitch Rebbe. As a matter of guys, we have to realize that we have to be strong. We have to realize that the Rebbe's message was we all have to learn from from my friend. Just the way it is. The Rebbe didn't look at people and say, where's your Tzermalakim, man? I don't see your Tzermalakim. You have to move out of the tour. You have to move out of the line. Everybody that came up, the Rebbe looked at him, gave him a dollar, and he changed their lives, and he made them into better people. That's the Rebbe Kiva. Okay, guys, have a good day. Or good evening or whatever it is and break the rope with